Hello, I'm Alan Fulton, Irrigation and Water Resources Advisor with the University of California Cooperative Extension Service. I work in the northern Sacramento Valley of the, in the counties of Tehama, Glen, Calusa, and Shasta. Welcome to this tutorial on how to use adjusted weekly ET estimates to irrigate young orchards. In this tutorial, we'll look at a couple of examples where we will make adjustments to the weekly crop ET reports received by growers and use them to make estimates of water needs of young trees developing at various stages. We'll begin with this slide and we'll start with this young walnut tree, a young potted tree that has been recently planted. In an earlier tutorial, we discussed different methods of adjusting our weekly crop ET reports which report values for mature orchards and adjust them for younger use in younger orchards, even as small as that little seedling tree I just showed you in the previous picture. I estimated that the photosynthetic active radiation, which is referred to as PAR, was estimated to average about 1% at this very early stage after transplanting. To the left is the table that was discussed earlier that's based on the relationship between canopy light interception for the size of the tree and the fraction of full ET that a tree will use. This table suggests that ET changes 2% for each 1% reduction in canopy shaded area for trees smaller than 20% ground shading and in midday. The arithmetic is 41% fraction of ET for mature orchards divided by 20% canopy shaded area. So 2% change in ET for 1% reduction in canopy size. So if I keep this in mind, I can estimate an average canopy of 1% suggests a KC or or an ET adjustment of 2%. Remember, there's a very small tree out there and, and, and an estimate of only 1% canopy light interception. So I need to reduce the estimate of weekly crop ET reported in the weekly reports that we send out to 2% of the reported estimate for this very small walnut tree. So here's a recent report for June 5th through June 11th, 2020. For a walnut growing in Tama County, the ET estimate is, is estimated to be 1.95 inches for a fifth leaf tree or older, fully bearing and fully using water. And I have a very small tree in this orchard of interest with 1% canopy. So I take the 1.95 inches in the table that I received and I multiply it by just 2% or 0 0.02. This tells me that the estimated crop evapotranspiration for that tiny little seedling tree is very small, only 400 inch in a seven day period. It's like the equivalent of a very uh, light rainfall. I can go ahead and adjust for inefficiency. In this case, I chose 70%. It may even be lower, 50% or lower in this case, because it's such a tiny little seedling with a small root zone that's been recently planted that much of the water that I apply with that micro sprinkler that's on the stake next to it may actually miss the root ball of that little seedling tree. So this is something to consider. But for example, I'm going to use 70% efficiency, the lowest that we consider on our weekly ET tables. Okay, I'm not going to carry, uh, talk you through all the math. There are other tutorials that you can refer to to get those examples. Instead, I'm going to use our online calculator. I'm going to use the calculator where we assist with converting the ET rates to gallons per rate per tree per week or per day. And at this stage, when the trees are very small, 
and we're trying to be precise with the amount of water that we're putting on, it may make the most sense to think in terms of, of gallons per tree per day or per week water use. So what this calculator shows is that when you put in a weekly ET estimate of a very small amount of 0.06, which is adjusted for the 70% efficiency, and in this walnut orchard, there were 90 trees per acre, this suggests that on a weekly basis, over 1,600 gallons of water are used per acre, and then on a uh, per tree basis per week, each tree uses about 18 gallons of water per week, and on a per day basis, rounding up, a single tree will use about three gallons of water per day. So with this weekly ET information in hand, these are some considerations for the manager. An estimated 18 gallons per week, based on 18 gallons of water use per week, or three gallons per day for this small tree. How does the water emission rate of a 10 gallon per hour microsprinkler, like this one on the left, relate to the daily tree water use? Do I want to run this sprinkler lighter and more frequently? Or do I want to run it longer and less frequently? My suggestion would be that you consider about 30 minute sets, which would deliver about five gallons of water to the tree, possibly every, every other day until the tree grows roots out of the potted media. And then I've made another note here that I would probably want to use a soil auger or soil probe or some kind of small shovel and go evaluate the soil moisture in this root ball of the tree to get some idea of what fraction of the water actually stayed within this small root ball of the tree. And also to observe how is this tree root growing and is it expanding out into the soil profile of which it was planted into. Okay, a second example. This is a different orchard, but again, a walnut orchard. It's several weeks older than the young seedling tree or the young potted tree that I showed you in the previous example. Estimate that the midday canopy shading is, to, is about 5% of the total area. So what is the estimate of the tree's weekly ET needs? So again, the PAR is estimated to be an average of 5%. That's the photosynthetically active radiation or the equivalent of the canopy light interception or ground shading. 5% several weeks after planting. The table on the left suggests, again, a 2% change in the ET or crop coefficient per unit reduction in canopy shaded area for trees smaller than 20%. So an estimated average canopy of 5% suggests a KC or an adjusted ET of right around 10%. So I need to reduce the estimate in our weekly crop ET reports to 10% of the reported estimate to represent the young tree in the previous picture. So again, back to our crop ET table. The ET for walnut in my area reports 1.95 inches. I adjust it by 10%. No irrigation efficiency considered. That's suggesting that in a one week period from June 5th to June 11th, 2020, that small tree would use about two tenths of an inch of water on a per acre basis. So trees across the whole acre would use about two tenths of an inch. Adjusted for an efficiency of 90%. Here I chose 90% because now the tree is rooted. Um, you'll notice in that picture that that was drip irrigated. And so uh, between the expanded root system and the drip irrigation targeting the tree a little bit better, I chose a 90% irrigation efficiency. Using the calculator that we offer online on our Sacramento Valley Orchard website, 
the 0.22 inch of ET for that week based on the on the 5% canopy converts to almost 6,000 gallons of water in a week from that acre for those trees. And on a per tree basis, 66 gallons per tree per week or about nine gallons per tree per day. So again, a tree of this size, our estimate after adjusting our ET tables is about nine gallons per tree per day or 66 gallons per week. You see the three drip emitters, one gallon per hour, drip emitter each, that's a three gallon per hour rate. How does this relate to the ET, the adjusted ET estimate? Will a lighter, more frequent irrigation be appropriate? Or will longer duration, less frequent be appropriate? My suggestion is three gallons per hour goes into 66 gallons per week. That's about 22 hours of total irrigation with these three drip emitters during the week. Then maybe you divide that into two 11 hour irrigation sets, approximately three or four days apart in this example. So again, this is an example of how to adjust our weekly ET reports for smaller trees and how to derive information that might help us determine a strategy for how long to run our irrigation system and how frequently. Okay, in this same example, what if we changed and, and this was not drip irrigated? What if there was a micro sprinkler and that micro sprinkler al alongside the tree applied water at about nine gallons per tree? Ask, taking it, the same questions into consideration, this information might suggest a longer duration and less frequent irrigation approach may be considered one six or seven hour irrigation set each week to supply this 66 gallons of water per week. It's been my experience that ET rates may not be the same as the irrigation requirements. It, it really depends on the soil and the vigor that the trees have and how they are growing. Here's an experience showing the first leaf trees, Chandler trees in a, in a soil on the west side of Corning that measuring in two replicates over the course of the season, we observed that the estimated ET during that, that first leaf of growth from a seedling to a tree that's about 12 feet tall, that ET was between 14 to 15 inches. In that season, 2011, we received four, over four inches of rain, and we had a decent profile of moisture in the profile before we transplanted the trees. When it was all said and done, these, these first-year trees acquired their moisture, the ET of about 15, 14 to 15 inches, of over four inches from rain, only a little over three inches from the actual drip irrigation, and once the trees rooted and, and started growing, particularly in the last half of the season, they thrived on soil moisture from the winter rainfalls. So this is an example of where, even though we have an ET estimate, we may not need to irrigate nearly as much as the ET suggests. We carried these studies out for four more years. What we did see was that the dependency on irrigation increased as the orchard got older. As I already described, the first leaf, we only had to supply 22% of the ET from irrigation. In the second year, 57% from irrigation. In the third year, 75% from irrigation. And by the fourth year, when these trees were 20 feet tall or taller, 25 feet, and uh, intercepting about 50% of the canopy light, and when there was a significant amount of ground cover in the orchard middles in the uh, month of May, we found that 75 to 85% of the crop ET for the season, which totaled 40 inches, needed to be supplied from irrigation. So the fact that our ET estimates 
do not necessarily have to be all supplied by, by irrigation leads us to the point that we need some other information to back up our irrigation scheduling when we are basing it up on ET only and our irrigation system design. So one option is the pressure chamber and tree water status, where we can actually measure, measure the crop water stress, provide feedback and adjust the ET based irrigation scheduling based upon that tree feedback. This is a pump up model, the pressure chamber, a cartoon illustrating how it works. We can sample leaves that are placed inside bags. These are non-transpiring leaves. We can sample them from the tree and we can actually measure the tension that the tree is under by the pressure on this gauge. The higher the number, the more stressed the tree. And we can use this feedback to adjust our ET based schedule. We put this sample in the pressure chamber. We apply pressure. We watch for the water that's inside the leaf to come to the cut surface of the stem. That's our endpoint for which we make the pressure uh, gauge measurement. Then for the different crops, almond, walnut, prune, uh, there's also data uh, starting to get a, uh, available for almond and pecan. We can use this, this measurement of stress to give us some indicator if the tree's uh, tree water status aligns is where we would like it to be for the type of growth we would like to encourage. And uh, then we can essentially get a uh, affirmation that our ET-based irrigation scheduling is working, or we can get some insight on how to adjust it. We can also turn to soil moisture monitoring. We can take the simplest approach, which would be a soil auger or a soil probe, digging and, expect, and inspecting the soil two and three feet deep for soil moisture content, and also using that for feedback or we could look at placing soil moisture sensors. It's been my experience the first year or two, soil moisture sensors are, are a bit more difficult to use because getting them placed in a, in, a, in a location that represents the changing root zone can be a challenge. So to just wrap up, there are some other pieces of information that you can read and get more information on ideas on how to go about scheduling irrigation in your young developing orchards. These are two sources. This is a Young Orchard Handbook. Development was led by Catherine Jarvis Sheen, Farm Advisor in Yellow County. You can locate it at this website link. And there is a section on irrigating almond and walnut, young almond and walnut orchards. Also at the Kern County Cooperative Extension website, there is also information posted and developed by retired Farm Advisor Blake Sandin that may be of interest. Thank you.